This is Joseph Drust, and welcome to another video on Z Classroom. In this video, I'll be taking a look at the processes I used to create the Metal Slug Tank fan art. The original image of the tank, depicted here, I created during the ZBrush 4R7 beta and sent to Keyshot for rendering using the ZBrush to Keyshot bridge. The design was based off of images of various Metal Slug model kits I found online. Since I created this model during the beta, I did not initially record the process. For this video, I recreated the entire model, again from scratch, and time-lapsed the entire workflow. The recreation of the model took a little over four hours, starting from a cylinder 3D object. So now this video has been sped up four times, so it's about 400% speed. This time-lapse here depicts the full workflow and has only had the areas where I was saving removed. So to start off, I just started with a cylinder 3D object, and here I'm going through and just splitting it in half, so making two hemispheres and then duplicating those, and then scaling it up to make it a little bit larger on one side to start generating the base for the tread. And then I'm going through with the bridge action in the Z Modeler brush here to kind of create those connections there, and then using slice and transpose to come through and add some more segments to the tread there, and just kind of move them around to kind of smooth them out a bit. Now you can see here I'm coming through and just using a lot of transpose and masking. And when I'm doing this procedure, I'm masking an area, inverting the mask, and then applying the transpose effect. Doing a little more bridging through here, and then some closed holes and some collapsing. It's just trying to get that shape like so. Now I'm going to create a cylinder shape to generate a drive wheel for the treads here. So I just took a cylinder and then turned it into an insert mesh object. This allows me to come through and draw that cylinder shape out directly on a point on our model. Now I'm going to come through and use the alternate polygrouping here for the Z modeler brush and coming through and just adding some details using the key mesh action and the insert edge looping. So just flushing out the design a little bit more, adding edge loops, moving points in and out with the alternate functionality of, of the Q-Mesh action. I do a lot of this process too. I'll add two edge loops to an area and then remove the one in the center to create bevel effects. Here I'm going to duplicate the front wheel to also use as the back wheel. And then just transposing and using scale and move to kind of scale that object up so it fits a little more precisely onto the base for the tread pattern there. Now you'll notice I've generated this outer edge loop. I've gone through now and applied a new polygroup to that area and then extruded that part out to create this indentation effect. Adding another cylinder. I do a lot of cylinder additions and then manipulate them with the Z modeler brush till I get a shape. And then I'll apply creasing to different areas to generate hard and soft edges on the model, and then just position them where they are needed. Just making sure they line up correctly there. Now I'm grabbing the IMM model kit brush, and I'm going to pull some of the screws out of there and just apply those around the actual wheels here to make it look like it actually attaches somewhat to the structure. I'm appending in a quick cube here. I'm going to start generating the tracks that go on the tread here. So as I manipulate this cube, you'll notice a lot of this masking process again. So masking off in space, moving it over to the model with spacebar, and then inverting the mask, and then applying a transform effect. So I do a lot of this process throughout this video here. I also use the clip brush to come through and align points on the model. So I can come through and clip an area and it's going to take all those points in that unmasked area there and then align them to wherever I have that clip line set to. So I play with this uh, track here for a little bit, trying to get all the edges soft and hard. And you can see I have some creasing on the model and I end up coming through and bumping edges if the creasing is too harsh in an area. I 
adding edge loops to areas where I want to come through and have a hard divide or a hard surface. And then for this piece of track here, I'm going to come through and start modeling a beveled edge as well. To kind of bring some of that surface out. It was a little bit too harsh. Then just using the transpose move option where you can hold control and shift and drag and it'll duplicate that part. This allows you to come through and quickly test objects on your model. So I found out it was a little bit too harsh and I didn't want to have those edges as harsh. I'm coming in now and just using the Q mesh brush and signing some poly groups and then pulling those out with the Q-Mesh modifier and then applying some scale. This is giving me this kind of beveled taper edge. And then I'm going in and manipulating these to round those out a little bit more. And then just modifying the creasing in other areas until the look that I'm going for is achieved. So I'm going to clean up that creasing there that was left over. So that looks pretty good for the track there. Now I'm just going to use that control shift click while using the actual move transpose brush to duplicate the part and then I'm going to switch to rotate and just come through and rotate. So this process of duplicating, move, rotate, duplicating, move, and rotate. It's really quite fast to get all these treads applied to the model here. I could have duplicated more than one track as I'm actually filling out the tread here, but since the tread was oddly shaped, I just went through and just did them one by one. So there's the treads, I'm just going to put some polygrouping on it, and I'm going to turn mask by polygroup on for the transpose line here. This is going to allow me to come through and just manipulate one of these polygroups at a time. So I just come over and click on that polygroup and drag that transpose line out. And whichever polygroup I click on is the only one that I'm going to be affecting. This just allows you to come through and just manipulate all these individual pieces pretty easily inside of ZBrush here. Still playing with the treads, rotating and moving as needed. Bringing them off a little bit from those wheels there. Now I'm going to go back to that insert mesh brush. I'm going to grab a little piston here and kind of add these in here for some suspension type elements. I broke those off using the uh, group unmasked into its own subtool. Now I'm going to make a chain to drive the drive wheels here. I'm going to start with a cylinder. I'm going to remove some of the loops here with the delete edge loop. And then I'm going to come back in with the Z modeler brush here and add some edge loops back in. Now I'm going to use the temporary poly group and just come through and delete some of these faces. And I'm do that same process where I'm going to use bridge two edges and just come through and start bridging these areas together to start creating the topology I'm looking for. So just taking primitives and manipulating them in space and then using options like the bridge to edge option with the Z-Modeler brush is a great way to come through and establish clean geometry on your meshes. So this is going to generate half of the chain here. Manipulate this a little bit more, it's a little bit too wide, so I'm going to scale it in some. I'm going to taper these ends a little bit, give them a little bit of a bevel. So just using Q mesh with the shift move option on that. And setting my creasing. So we have part of the chain. Now I'm going to insert an edge in the middle here and I'm going to turn this into an IMM curve brush. So I'm going to generate three polygroups from this. So I'm positioning it in the center of the world and using mirror and weld. And that's going to mirror it right across the center of the world there. And then I can apply that third polygroup. Now I have three polygroups on this model here, so I can turn it into a brush and activate curve mode. And now I can come through and start drawing this out on my model. 
Now when I drew this out, the topology on the base was really low, so the curve brush wasn't handling exactly how I wanted it to. So I've appended a box object here and dynameshed it, and now I have enough resolution on that model to generate that curve exactly how I want it. And I'm going to use that move transpose option to kind of duplicate those points there. Move them around, position them how they would kind of be to actually drive those wheels. And then I'm going to delete the curve and then just position them all together like so. Then I adjusted the thickness on this a little bit too thin. So one nice thing about ZBrush is that anytime you want to make a change and come in and change it, and when you're dealing with this low resolution geometry, it's very helpful. So you'll notice there I had the demo head in there. I use the demo head a lot just to position my model on the canvas and make sure I'm facing forward with my meshes. So just load him in, click on him, see where he's facing, and then go back to my model. Helps me from generating flipped upside down treads and vehicles. So here I found out the inner portion of the tread was too deep, so I'm just coming in now and modifying that. So polygrouping and masking to find those different areas and then just moving the individual parts like so. And when I'm using transpose move to move objects, I'm making sure I'm in a fully front view and drawing the transpose line out so it's locked into that camera plane and then I can move it out or I can just come across and click on the surface and it's going to generate that transpose line right off that surface normal and it's going to allow me to perform those precise world transforms on the model. Fixing the wheel areas. Making sure those screws are attached and not floating in space. Now I'm fixing the item with a mirror and weld here to make sure they're even. And now I'm appending in another cube here and start generating the base body for the tank. Using the Z-Modeler brush and adding edges and masking and using transpose to generate the forms. And then coming back through with the Q-Mesh action and temporary polygroups, pull shapes out. Lots of added edges and using creasing and moving items to kind of round these shapes out and get them to handle more how I want them to on the model. So constantly rotating and just adjusting different parts. Here I'm playing with the creasing again and moving items around to get more bends and different shapes. And adding some edge loops and using mirror and weld to make sure they go on both sides to get different fall offs if the creasing was too harsh. And adding some supporting edge loops here to start pulling out some of these other forms like the posts that the actual turrets go on. And I'm always trying to predetermine where the edge cuts are going to be before actually performing a Q-Mesh action. This allows you to come through and manipulate the surface of your model pretty quick. So like those little cut-ins. And oftentimes when I'm using the Z-Modeler brush, it's to do subtractive processes on the mesh. And then I'll use the Z-Modeler brush again to create added shapes that I'll then use as separate sub-tools to add more details. I'm going to use the bridge connected polys right there. Just coming in and playing with the creasing to get those items looking round and removing the creases I don't need. And then I'm moving that edge loop up and down to adjust the fall off on that actual roundness there. So just playing with the design some more, making it rounder in some of these areas. And 
Now I'm going to start adding some pieces to the side of the tank here. It's another cylinder I'm using Q mesh to pull that top out to create a nice beveled edge. And I'm just going to turn that in an insert mesh brush and then apply it to the model. And then split those parts out to their own subtool. And then grab another of the IMM model kit parts here. And just drag that out as well to add a little more detail. And then duplicate that around and then apply mirror and weld so it goes on the other side. Adding the X block here, just putting that in there and adjusting the other shapes so they fit. Adding another one in the front here. And then coming in and adding some loops to cut in this edge here. So subtractive editing again. And then beveling some of these edges just to get those areas a little bit softer. Messing with the creasing some more. So it's a little bit low, so using that mask invert the mask and then move the transpose this is looking a bit too small so grabbing that subtool again and then updating those correspondent parts so they're not merged into each other and using mirror and weld to get everything back to being mirrored now this part here was a little bit flat so I'm going to come through and use an alpha to deform this a little bit. So I've just loaded in an alpha I've created from a cylinder. And then I've taken this object here and divided it up so it has some topology. And now I'm using the drag rectangle brush and that alpha. And when you apply this to the surface of the model, it's going to deform it a little bit. So it's kind of rounding it out. And now I can embed it into the front of the tank here. And it's got a nice round curvature to it rather than being that really harsh shape. So I use a lot of that beveling functionality, smooth areas out on a model as I work. So just making alphas and then just dragging them across surfaces. Added some more greeble items here. And with these, I want to make sure that they're consistent size across all the model. So I just duplicated these guys and flipped them around and now put them on the back of the model as well. Don't really want these little eyelet things here being different sizes all over the mesh. I want to keep that area consistent. Now I'm adding this smoke missile launcher thing here to the side. I just took a sphere object and just brought it in. And I'm just scaling that down, kind of fitting it where I want. And instead of using the Z modeler brush on this part, I'm just going to divide this up and then just sculpt on it. So sometimes it's faster to apply details to sculpting than it is to model them out. So this is a perfect example. Just using the alpha over here, I just selected the standard brush and then turning on drag dot. I can generate one size for that circle and then apply it to the other areas on the model. Then I'm backfilling these holes in now with another IMM brush from that model kit and just setting the draw size to make sure it's a consistent size every time I draw it. And then just using mirror and weld to make sure it gets on both sides of the model. Using transpose and masking to adjust some areas. Now coming in and I'm going to punch in the surface of this back area here using the Q mesh action. And then you'll notice how close these little lines are. So I'm using slide point, come through and slide those out. And now I'm gonna use the clip brush and masking here to align those faces back to normal. So I do a lot of this as well. I'll mask an area out, use the clip brush, and then come back through and align those unmasked areas. It's really handy for getting your surface to go back to being flat again. You'll see me use that process uh, quite a bit through this video. So checking the creasing and the curvatures on items, adding a little more details with the Q-Mesh action. Adding another repeating X-Block insert mesh here. 
I'm looking for these little things here. So here I'm going to use these guys and compile some different IMM brushes together to create a shape. So there's going to be little vents on the back here for the actual engine area. Splitting those guys off to a new subtool. I'm coming in and applying another IMM on top of that. So just adding more depth. So instead of just having one single IMM, you can come through and start combining these things and get more interesting shapes out of them. The back area here was looking a little plain, so I'm adding a little more details here. Just another simple quick cube, and then adding creasing and edge loops to bevel and soften some of these areas on this mesh. And then just using transpose to position it where needed. I decided this area needed to be carved out, so I established some edge loops and then used the Q mesh brush to come through and punch that area out. And then mask that area, flipped it, and used the clip brush to flatten that area again. So it's nice and square. It's just adding a little bit of details and different parts in the back here to create a little more visual interest. I decided these were too far in, so I'm coming back to that subtool and then pushing those areas out and modifying some of these shapes a little more to make it work with the design a little bit better. And then I want to manipulate this shape here and bring it to the front and use it as a bumper part. So reusing items you've already made is another huge time saver. And you can always manipulate them, so this was the part that was on the back of the mesh that I created, and now I'm going to use it for these front bumper areas. Just masking and move transpose and rotate. Then turning on transparency when needed. So I can see how that part is being affected around the entire model. And then using the move transpose clone option to duplicate these guys. Now one of these got distorted a little bit, so you can see I'm going to use that clip option again, fix that one edge. And then I'm going to duplicate that tool and use the actual position options over here in the geometry to center it to the world. This is handy when you want to just center something back to the world and come over to the position area and just hit zero, 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 and it'll all go back to the center of the world. I'm adding a larger bumper here and adding some edge loops to support a hole I want to put in. And then updating the creasing and different items to the shapes. I'm going to duplicate one of these guys again and move it up and fill that hole in there. A little more added design. And then adding a little more IMM parts so it's not so bland on the front of the tank here. I'm using symmetry to move these guys around separately. Decided I need to add another part to these back items here. More scaling and transposing here. Now this was a little bit too close to the back of the model here, so I'm going to go back to the model and then manipulate this to give it a little more real estate to play with so it's not hanging off the edge like so. So now it's looking a little bit better. It's not floating in space and I have a little more room to kind of play with that shape with. And since these are all separate subtools, and they're all the dynamic subdivision models and come through and move them around pretty quick and switch back and forth and change design ideas on the fly. I 
So cloning another part that I've already created to kind of reuse. This is going to be another additive element. So instead of actually modeling this into the body here, I'm just going to use it as a separate subtool. So this allows me to just manipulate this really low resolution geometry and it's still going to give me the same end result. And then just duplicating that again, I'm going to put this up on this top piece here. I'm going to replace the one I pulled out on the body. So that was that nice kind of rounded edge. And I'm going to remove the original one from the main body and then clean up all the creasing elements. Switch back and forth between perspective and orthographic quite a bit. I usually probably work in orthographic most of the time. Adding some more edges here to soften up this transitional curve. Then this is going to start generating some of these smokestacks here on the back here. So appending a cylinder and then coming through and adding some edge loops quick. Using mirror and weld to your advantage. And then setting up different polygroups on these guys and extending out the middle parts of this. Now this top part here, I want to have it have this nice kind of bend. So what I'm doing right here is I took that face and extruded it off using the Q mesh action. Then I gave it thickness and now I'm deleting two areas on those two surfaces and now I'm using bridge two holes to kind of generate that round shape. So this process of coming through and cloning a face, giving the face thickness so you can see it in orthographic side view. Now you can position that wherever you want and then just delete the faces that are pointing towards each other and use bridge two holes and you can get some really nice effects. So I do that quite a bit to get curved shapes on my models like this exhaust pipe here. Then just using transpose to position this where needed. Holding shift while using the transpose rotate will allow you to lock into 45 degree angles. So that is helpful. And then this was a little bit small, so I went to the actual deformation tab and I'm going to inflate it a little bit just to give it a little more thickness. It was a little bit too tiny. Since it's that low resolution geometry, it doesn't distort the geometry all that much when you do an inflate. And I didn't like the positioning of the treads with the body, so I'm just adjusting those slightly. Then modifying different parts, just rotating around and looking to see what I like and don't like. So adding some screws here, now you notice the screws were a little bit too big on the front, so I went to the back and found an area where I had a screw already placed and sized it based on that. And then once I locked in that draw size, wherever I apply that screw again, it's going to be the same size. So keeping the screws on the model here consistent across the entire mesh. You don't really want small screws in one part and then large screws in the other. So. I'm going to start cutting in some lines here, do some more negative subtractive elements. So just coming through and establishing some edge loops and then filling those with that temporary polygroup. This time I crease those polygroups first and then I applied a Q-mesh action to have it start generating this hole effect. And then I'm coming through increasing those edges and toggling dynamic subdivision on and off to kind of see how that creasing is going to look. This allowed me to come through and keep all those edges harsh on the model and give that little indent design there. And then this edge here was a little bit too harsh so I just bumped up two edges along there and then deleted the edge in the center. And now it's nice and soft. Back to another cylinder again here. Creating a new insert mesh on that and then dragging that out like so to give me the pivot points for the turret. So turning it into that IMM brush will allow me to drag it out directly on a point that's on the model. These turrets have this rounded aspect to them, so I appended in another uh, sphere 3D object here. 
I'm just positioning this on the model and I've got transparency on so I kind of see it in relation to that center post that I just added. And now I'm going to use the clip brush here to trim the areas of this here. Flatten the two sides like so. And that gives me this really nice little shape here. And then I'm going to come back in and add another IMM brush there to just add a little more detail. And just transpose that in and out until it looks right. Now I'm going to add the barrel part to this, so another cylinder as well. And I'm rotating it in the correct axis here. And then just repositioning it and scaling it down. Now I'm aligning it to the middle of the sphere there, so it's directly in the middle. Then I'm adding some edge loops here. See how thick I want the barrels and the spacing to be. And then I'm just going to pull that out quickly like so. I'm going to come through and add some edge loops through this area through here. I'm going to come through apply poly groups to those middle areas and then I can cue mesh them down to kind of shrink that in. But first I duplicated this tool and moved it out since I already had a cylinder there. And I'm going to use this for these side areas for the barrels here. And just using move to grow those out. And then duplicating that and rotating to get the other areas of the barrel there. And then merging those all together. So I have one single subtool. And now I can manipulate this further, turning dynamic subdivisions on. Using the alternate poly group here to add the indentions for the barrels here. And I get some edge loops. So you now I have this nice barrel shape here. Now I'm adding another edge loop with slice all the way through, so it's coming through and slicing all of them at once. And then I'm deleting that middle edge loop out of there, which gives me that little bit of bevel. So now I merge it all together, and now I can scale it up and manipulate it a little bit more. I was looking a little bit too small. I'm trying to fix this clearance of these actual uh, tank treads here from running into the turret. So just moving the tracks around, just masking them and moving them. And then just adjusting the guns a little bit more. Now I need to add some little round parts of this too, so a little more interesting stuff on the guns. So just grabbed another Sphere 3D object and added that and then duplicated it with the transpose option. And then just using masking to kind of reposition that, reposition the spheres on the guns like so. And then just using mirror and weld to get two of them on each side and then just playing with the scale a little bit more. And you can use the transpose lines to draw off of any point on your model. So these cylinders have that nice middle point. So I can come through and drag a transpose line off that point, and it's going to allow me to get a rotational point off the middle part of that mesh. Really handy when wanting to rotate off of a specific area. Added another quick cube here and just manipulating this with some creasing to add some starting geometry. I'm just going to start making the turret here using the Q mesh action with the temporary poly group to start manipulating the areas of the geometry here. Using the shift function to come through and move instead of actually perform the Q mesh action. And just using a lot of transpose, clip, and masking to come through and start manipulating this form. 
I mess with this form quite a bit until I get it to where I want it to be. So messing with the creasing, coming through, adding different edge loops, just playing with the shape until I like how it's looking. And always checking back with the whole model just to make sure it's not going too crazy. As you can see, with the dynamic subdivision on, if I turn it off, this mesh is actually really low geometry. So it allows you to come through and quickly manipulate the surface of the mesh real easily. So using slice to add some edge loops across areas and then using mirror and weld to kind of replicate it to the other side. Playing more and more with the creasing here looking for those soft and hard edges. Add another beveled area to the back here. This one took me a little while to get the shape where I wanted to be. A lot of playing back and forth with the model here. Still not totally happy with it. Going through and adding some more loops and removing the creasing in different parts. using a lot of masking and transpose to manipulate different areas. So now it's getting closer to the shape I'm kind of looking for. Adding some more of the roundness to the actual shape here. And then still not happy with these creasing, so I'm going to go through and just remove all these and just use uh, bumped edges to establish that roundness. So just removing the creasing all together from some of these areas. Using the clip option again to come through and straighten these parts out. Got some areas of topology back here that weren't cooperating, so I'm just using transpose move function in the Z modeler brush, which will automatically mask everything except for the point you click on. It's handy when moving vertices in the middle of areas. So now I'm going to come through and start adding these rocket launchers to the side of the mesh here. More cylinders. To create this I'm going to generate two parts again like the initial base tread. So just duplicating the cylinder and then I'm going to come through and start manipulating these parts here until I get the shape I want. So it's pretty good for the size of that object there. Now I'm going to hide half of this object. I'm going to close holes, which is going to give me a flat section of the mesh here. And I'm going to polygroup that section with flat island. And then I'm going to use the move transpose with control and shift again to extrude that face out. So I end up with these capes here. Now I'm going back through and deleting some faces here. And then I'm going to merge these together and start bridging these two areas. 
to get this shape. So using primitives to establish the base shape and then using bridging to fill in those areas. These areas were too close together so I moved them down and then bridged again. And then I just got rid of everything except for the front face of this mesh here. And now with just this front face I can apply a Q-Mesh action to give it thickness. And then I can come through and apply it again to get that other area of the mesh here and then use transpose scale to kind of scale it down. And now I have that exact shape I was looking for. And I can come through and start modifying the creasing on this mesh here. Manipulating a little bit more to get a little more roundness out of the object. And then tapering areas if needed. Just using masking and transpose. So now I wanted a little divide on the mesh here. So I'm coming through and just adding some edge loops and then giving that edge loop a new poly group and then Q meshing that in. So now I have this little divot on the actual mesh here. Now I'm adding a little more parts or design elements to it, so going back to that IMM brush and adding these insert mesh objects to that center point on the mesh here. So the other handy reason for using cylinders to start objects is to get this nice center point. And just getting one the correct size and then duplicating it like so. And now I'm going to use mirror and weld here to replicate it over the other side. So you can see through my subtool list here, I just have a mess of names. And usually I'll go through at the very end when I'm done with the model before I hand it off to anyone and start cleaning up all those names, merge things together. But during the creation process, it's usually just duplicate and start moving around and just freely creating the actual object. Not really concerned about the naming at this point. So adding the front part of the turret here, just pen in another cube and start messing around with the actual creasing and edges to kind of determine how hard or soft that area would be. I'm using the Q mesh option here and scale to taper, create bevels really quick. And just a lot of positioning and trying different heights on different areas of the mesh here. I'm going to add the barrel now, so bring in another cylinder and then moving into position and scaling it. If you press 1 after you do a scale option, it will repeat last. So you can scale once and then just keep pressing 1 and it will end up repeating that scale process until the object gets as small as you want it. So the barrel's got a little taper, so I just set up a simple cylinder there and then added some edge loops and then tapered them accordingly. I'm going to add the interior part of this barrel here, so just using that Q-Mesh alternate poly group and then pushing it in with the Q-Mesh action. Setting some edge loops here to add softness and hardness to these parts and adding some internal ones and adjusting kind of the internal shell. And I want these little rifling areas here, so I'm just adding those quick with the Q-Mesh brush. And this little underbarrel part, so I just duplicated that main cube and then split it using the split unmasked parts to its own subtool. And now I can come through and just start manipulating that updating the creasing and the size until it gets to the shape I want it to be. So once again, adding the additive parts as separate subtools and then using the Zmodeler brush to create any of the subtractive elements. So 
So I'm stealing these uh, back parts of the tank here and I'm going to put them on the top here just to get a little more detail up at the top. So just reusing parts and then duplicating. And then I found that the turret was a little bit too low, so I'm modifying that shape and the height of that. Just replicated that part off the main body of the tank and just started using that piece again. Adding a little more paneling and detailing to the mesh. Then adjusting the creasing. I'm adding a little more detail parts, so a little cylinder object here. Appending that again and then just positioning it where it needs to go. And still I always go back and look at the entire shape and I can still come through and change and manipulate different areas if needed. Nothing's really set into stone. So if something's too small or too large, I can quickly just go to that subtool and select it and change it. So adding some more edge loops and removing those to get some beveled effects. And then duplicating that cylinder part and adding it elsewhere on the mesh. And just adding edge loops and applying scale options to different parts to taper ends or areas. And then coming back through with creasing and then just toggling dynamic subdivision on and off to see that crease get updated. Now here I want to add another cut line to the top here to match the rockets on the side. So adding some edge loops, then giving that edge loop a new polygroup, and then using the Q mesh action to push that area in. And I'm coming back through now and updating the creasing on that area. Just make sure it looks nice. And then just bumping those edges together so they match that external one. Come back and changing the thickness of this so that I just generated an inner poly group on that area there. And then I'm just using the Q mesh action with move with that poly group. And that's going to allow me to change that inner dimension of that cylinder. Adding a little more screws here and making sure I'm the same size as the other screws on the model. Adding some more parts, so part of the suspension here, another cube that I just brought in. I'm just starting manipulating the base shape here for that. And these are also very kind of simplistic primitive objects. So it's basically just a cube that has a part of it extruded out and then tapered. And that's all it pretty much is. It's pretty amazing how many objects are just literally primitive shapes. They've just been manipulated a little bit to get the uh, desired effect. So I have transparency on here, just so you can see through the other parts of my model. And I'm just figuring out these suspension areas on the mesh. Now I'm adjust the creasing here and I'm actually just going to apply a bevel. So I'm going to apply a bevel across all the creasing on this model underneath the geometry panel here. And this allows me to create this nice soft effect on the mesh without having to cut in those edges manually. So I come through and get this nice soft area to that part there and then just threw on some screws there from that IMM brush and that part's good to go. Now I'm going to add the little suspension part so I appended another cylinder here. I'm just going to cut in some edge loops quick with the Z-Modeler brush and then just taper in that one area so I gave that area in between those edge loops a new poly group and then use the Q mesh action to push it in and get this effect. And I'm just going to rotate this into position. I clicked on the surface 
of the actual end cap there, which drew the actual transpose line straight out from that face normal, which allows me to manipulate the size of it based on that face normal. So it's really handy if you've rotated a part and then you want to change the size or length of it. You come through and just click on that point on the end of that cylinder there, and it'll draw that transpose line straight out from that surface normal. And then you can manipulate the shape with it. Some more masking and moving of the different parts. Just making sure it looks okay. Checking it now against all the other subtools I have on this model here. A little bit thin, so just widening it up some. And it's going to mirror and weld it over to the other side. So I'm coming back to that little base area there. I'm going to add a little more detail to the undercarriage here. So just took that cube, made it thin, and then just extruded two parts out. And now I'm coming through and actually applying creasing. And it was upside down, so I had to flip it quick. Just add a little more detail there underneath the base. And then after I did that, I found that this whole turret was extremely low. So I'm coming back now and just moving up all these individual parts. So just holding Alt and clicking on a part of the model will actually switch to that subtool. And then I come through and just switch to it and then use Move Transpose to move it up, switch to the next one, move it up, switch to the next one, move it up. So check in proportions again. And I'm going to come through and now generate this little antenna on the back here. So a lot of Z modeler brush, transpose, and masking. So once I get the size right, I'm gonna come back through and just apply a bevel across the entire surface. So I'm gonna apply creasing first, and then I'm gonna to go to the bevel modifier over there and manipulate that just to generate some soft edges on it. So it's gonna take all that creasing and then bevel all those creased edges. Then I'm gonna add the antenna part here. So another cylinder and scaling that down. I'm going to come through and just quickly taper the tops here. Do the same thing on the bottom. And then I'm going to cut in another one, extrude it out, and then come through and apply creasing. That shape a little bit softer there, looking good. And then just rotating it into place quick, that transpose. So now I'm going back to the treads here. I'm just going to modify some stuff I didn't like. It's so just coming through and doing some polygrouping. So I also had one side was different than the other, so I applied another mirror and weld and fixed that. And now I'm fixing the treads a little bit. And then they still weren't doing what I wanted to do, so I've just polygrouped that whole area, unmasked it, and now I'm just using the actual move infinite depth option in the Z modeler brush and just manipulating those to reform the form the treads and just checking the turret it was a little bit too long so coming back in rotating it back down and then shortening it up some and then just replacing it on the model I'm gonna start adding the last few pieces to the actual tank here so I'm just establishing some anchor points quick with the Q mesh brush. So just taking a cube and then duplicate it a few times and just moved it around to see where I'm actually going to start adding these other elements. So this one's going to be a little vent, so coming through and tapering different areas. Once again, very simple geometry and Turning the dynamic mode on will make it look like a lot higher resolution than it actually is. I'm going to use the inset option here on these front faces to kind of carve in a surface across all those polygons.
So grabbing that inset option and just insetting that in and then key meshing the middle part. So now I have this nice lip area. And now I'm coming through and adjusting the creasing so it all looks good. And I'm going to add some venting to this mesh. So I'm going to go back to that IMM brush and I'm going to pick out this little vent here. And I'm just going to position it like so. And then I'm actually just going to use the clip brush to clip it to fit in that actual shape. So the clip brush is really handy when doing things like that. So you can use you know, different brushes or different parts and then use the clip brush to come through and just mash the geometry in there. Since it's hidden behind the walls of this vent here, you're not going to see the uh, geometry that was clipped, but it still gives you that final effect. And we're matting the area for the searchlight here. Adding some more bevels to these. So I've added some edge loops and then going through and deleting an edge loop, which will give that kind of harsh angle. And then coming through and adding some creasing to make sure it stays harsh. Now I'm going to add the searchlight part. And this is just taking another sphere again and just manipulating it. So it needs to be a little bit oblong. So I'm using the move option to scale it horizontally to make it wide like so and just moving around and then I'm going to clip that front part right off so it gives me that half dome look add some supporting screws quick then add another sphere for the dome part of the light I'm just manipulating it moving it around make sure it lines up now I'm going to add the ring that goes around the light. So I brought in another cylinder here. And just positioning it like so. I'm going to add some edge loops in here. The Z modeler brush and then punch a hole right out of the center. And then clip some areas out. Then use the clip brush to align all those parts together. Then apply some creasing and some beveling. It's going to take that harshness out of it after I apply this bevel here. Still messing with the light some too. So you can see there's the bevel, now it's soft. So it's looking better. Now I can manipulate the light some more. This is a little bit too wide, so I'm coming in just masking this really quick and scaling it down a little bit. And then since the scale shrinks in, I've just moved it out a tad. Just changing the sizes of these objects so they can line up and match a little bit better. I want the light to be a little bit taller, so going in and manipulating that. I got these little back antennas too, so I'm taking the cylinder and cutting it in half again, capping that hole, and then using the control shift move option to clone that face out. And then I'm repositioning this to the center of the world underneath the position modifier. And then I'm using transpose again to scale that out so it fits nicely. Then adding the creasing and dynamic subdivision. And then coming back in, I'm going to add another bolt to this part here. And I want these bolts to be a little bit longer this time, so after I place them, I'm going to actually mask part of it and then use the move transpose line to grow the end. So I have a little thicker bolt there. And I'm just coming through and manipulating that object so it fits a little better. And I'm going to add the longer wiry antennas here. So taking another quick cube, moving it into position, and then just manipulating it quick. Just testing it at all angles and with rotation to make sure it still fits in that little space. And then I'll apply increasing in the dynamic subdivision. Now I'm going to add the antennas. So I appended in another cylinder, scaled that down, and then used the move transpose options to kind of grow that cylinder out and make it taller. Then just manipulating it around the world so it fits correctly. 
and applying some creasing quick so it's nice and smooth. Then I'm merging it down into the other part. The tip was still a little bit too harsh, so I added a little bevel there. And I'm going to rotate this and then mirror it over the other side. So I'm just checking proportions on items again. Make sure it all lines up and matches. Now I have one more thing I want to add, and that's this little part here. So I went back to that IMM brush and drew that guy out, and then positioned him like so. Now the initial cylinders I made for this were a little bit too large, so I need to go in and modify those as well. So I'm going to select that cylinder again. And just come in and grab that internal poly group again, just move it down so it actually looks a little more embedded. And that is it. So that's the end of the time lapse here. I hope this tutorial helped give some examples of workflows that uh, could potentially be used inside of ZBrush to create hard surface models. And that's the end. So happy ZBrushing and stay tuned for more videos on Z Classroom.